Uh, hello again, this is uh, Richard White. Um, today's fly um, is going to be a what I call a crystal damselfly larva. Now if you're ever fishing in um, still water, uh, damselfly larvae uh, are a very large percentage of the diet of, uh, of trout and also panfish. Um, and they're fairly distinguishable. They have gills on the very tip of their abdomen. They tend to have a long, slender abdomen, very prominent eyes, um, fairly a slender body, noticeably long legs. Um, this one is tied to sink. It has lead dumbbell eyes. You can use um, bead chain eyes, or what I particularly like to use. Um, is a plastic bead chain eye. Um, it's a product called Pearl Strings um, and it looks just like bead chain um, but it's plastic so it's not adding any weight. It gives you color, it gives you a large eye um, so it's very handy for imitating the eyes of the large eyes of a damselfly or you can use them for anything else that has a large protruding eye, like a damselfly, a dragonfly. Um, but without, when you use them, you're not adding much weight. So I would fish this with a um, sink tip line or even a full sinking line to get the damselfly down. Now, damselflies are generally also, the coloring of them generally pretty much matches the local vegetation. So I'm going to start by tying in the eyes and I'm going to start a little bit behind the eye of the hook. You notice I'm about an eye's length back from the eye of the hook. Um, as though you were tying in any kind of a dumbbell eye. Um, then lay that on top of the shank. I'll do six five or six turns around in one direction to get it pretty much where I want it. Come back in the other direction. I'll turn it so you can see it a little better. And I'll do that several times, but make sure I have it sitting where I want. I want to leave a little room for the head. Um, then go over the eyes, under the shank. On the other side, the same thing, over, over the eye, under the shank. I'm going to do that a number of times, keeping a fair amount of tension. Then I'm going to go over the shank, under the eye. And what that's going to do is pull, tighten up those previous wraps I had made. And that will tend to hold those eyes in place even better. Now, what I, one of the things I always do to help keep those in place better is to add either some crazy glue or some head cement. In this case, I'll use just a drop of crazy glue right on top of that. Let that soak in. Do a few more wraps through that. That'll help encourage the glue to get down into the threads. Then I can, as I would do on any other fly, I'm going to bring my thread further back. Now, if I'm tying a bunch of these, I would do many like this and let them sit. So I'm going to put some half a half hitch on here, a few half inches on here to hold this in place. Oops, and I broke my thread. Um, that's not a good sign. So I will come back and wrap again. Cut off the excess. And we all do this once in a while. I caught my thread on the hook point, so loosen it up half hitch to hold it in place, put in another half hitch to hold it in place. So now I could do that, tie oh, four or five of these, set them aside, let them thoroughly dry, because the next step I need the thread, which is to create that long abdomen you see, and then the little tail section, and bring this up again that 
long abdomen with that little tail section which is actually the gills of the damselfly. And all I'm doing to do that is binding down, whip finishing near the end. So I'm going to take a little bit of the DNA hollow fusion. Um, in this case it's a light olive color. And I'm going to take a small bunch of that and this is very subjective how big is a small bunch but it's a small fraction of the thickness of a pencil um, it's maybe a quarter of the diameter of a pencil and I'm going to pull that out and I'm going to cut the full length excuse me while I do this off camera So I have that full length, but what I want to do is have the, I'm going to basically whip finish about a quarter of an inch in from the end. And that's going to create the gills that are going to go on the back of this fly. So easiest way to do that, for me anyway, is I will wet this. Then I'm going to use my thread almost like I'm starting to tie a fly on a hook. I'm going to go several times around. I'm going to go several times around the bundle. Whoops. Go around my bundle several times to hold it in place. When I'm happy I've got that held in place by the wrapped thread going to let out some more thread. Then I'm going to, oops, I need more thread than that. I'm going to get a long stretch of thread so I can now put a half hitch on top of where I let everything, where I wrapped everything else and I'll let the bobbin tighten that down. Then I'll do that again. I'm trying to keep this on the screen for you. Put the thread around, then I'm just going to hold the ends of my flash here and let the bobbin drop again. And I'll do that a third time just to add one more, whoops, add one more half hitch, let that drop, then I can tighten those down and trim off do this on, see if I can do this on camera for you. It's much harder to do it on camera than to do it in your lap. Trim off any excess thread. Now, if the ends of that aren't even, you can, as this one is not, I can go back and clip that off to be the length I want. Now, this piece I have here is much too long for one fly. And I'm going to do almost everything with this as one. So this is really enough for two flies. So I'm going to go back to the other end um, and repeat those steps. So again, I'm going to hold my thread parallel. Hold on one second. I'm going to hold my thread that down so I can do this properly so I can see what I'm doing. Parallel to the material. Bring this up again for you to see. I'm going to bring the material up and hold my thread next to it. And I'm going to wrap one, two, three times around a little bit loosely then let the weight of the bobbin pull it down, then I can pinch it so I can wrap around it again. Then, as I did before, I can put some half hitches on to hold that in place. Whoops, let me get that half hitch properly done. Excuse me. Having a problem with my bobbin here. Put my half hitch on, grab the end, you 
you can't see this with my finger, and let the bobbin sink down and tighten up. Then do that yet again. Bring it up, half hitch, use my thumb to pin it in place. Let the weight of the bobbin pull it down, snug it, and then I can cut off, and I'll do this off screen because it's much easier to do. It's just trimming the thread as you would anytime you're cutting off thread. And obviously do the same with the tag end. All right. Now that we have our two, our piece now has two bound up ends, and I have enough for tying two flies, I can start to tie my fly on. So now, again, take my thread, wrap it on the hook shank, basically restarting it this time near the tail, determine the length I want for my fly, let me snug this over just a little bit, and I generally want the fly to be, the length of the tail going off to be at least twice the body length. Lay that down on the shank, and I'm having trouble with breaking thread here, so I always have another. Don't know why I'm having so many problems with catching my thread today, but hey, we all have those days, and the trick is to just keep going. So again, I will draw this out, lay this on the hook shank, right on the top, and I'm going to make a few turns. To bind that down now I'm going to bring the thread forward a little bit and then I'm going to fold the rest of this back and I'm going to use a little hair clip to hold that down because now I want to attach material for the legs. And for that I have a an olive grizzly hen and I want some fairly long fibers here because these have fairly, fairly long legs so I'm going to pull out a feather that's fairly far up on here. So one olive grizzly feather and I will, as I would do on any feather like this, I'm going to remove the fluff from the base, just plucking that off. Two feathers, there we go. Remove the fluff from the base, then I'm going to isolate the tip Hold the tip and pull all the other fibers back. Because I'm going to tie this in by the tip. So let me reverse this to my other hand. I'll then use my fingers, my scissors to just clip off the very end of that feather. Clip the tip off so I can then tie that in place. I'm going to tie it with the concave side next to the shank. And I'm going to tie that in right behind the eyes. I'm going to go over a number of times. I don't want that moving, so I'm going to tie it down quite tightly. Um, now, I'm going to leave that in place and I'm going to use my flash here to create the wing buds. So I'm just going to fold it and bring it forward and then pushing it back, pinning it with my left hand, binding it down once, 
twice. Three, four. Now I'm going to wind the legs and I can sweep these back a little bit and sweep them back and sweep them back and now that I've used all the hackle I'm going to use bind that down go over that several times to lock it in pull this pull the hackle back so I can go back over it and tighten that in place then clip off the remainder of the hackle. Now I'm going to create, I'm going to take those legs and fold them down to the side and create the second wing pad. So again I'm going to grab my flash, fold it backward to create a pad that goes over where the legs are and almost back to the previous one and laying it back to the front again and I'll go over that a few times and you can see I've built up a little wing pad right behind the other one and I'll go over that several times to hold it in place then I'm going to bring my thread in front of the eyes now the trick here is I want to use what's remaining of the flash to build up the head and I'm going to do this the easy way so I'm going to go around under the eye back so I'm going to go under the eye, around the bead, the plastic bead chain, behind, around the plastic bead chain again, up in front again. Then I can start to lash this down with my thread. Pull this up, clip this off very, very close. Now I can use my thread to bind down anything that overlaps and I'll get a nice full head and I'll have the wing pads and now I can, if I need, if I have any of this sticking too far forward, I can trim off any excess and then I can whip finish the head and add any head cement. So. One, two, three, four, five times around. Complete the whip finish. Clip the thread off. And then I'll flip it upside down just because that'll make it a little easier for me to get the head cement on without getting it in the eye of the fly. I'll also make sure I get some head cement on the uh, thread winds that are behind the bead chain. And once that's done, it's finished and the remainder of that flash, I have enough of the flash to tie another fly. Alright, so now these are very effective fished over weed beds um, in still waters. Um, and I like to fish them in a sinking line so if I can get them down then I can twitch them upward because to imitate the, f the fly, to imitate the damselfly larva as it's swimming towards the surface if it's getting ready to hatch. Otherwise they tend to stay near the bottom. Alright, so thank you very much. I'm sorry that one had a little bit of um, few problems in the tying but we all have those sometimes and we know none of us are perfect we just keep right on going ahead we find a problem we fix the problem and we move on all right so again simple damselfly larva pattern it has nice flash it's visible they catch fish um, and it's pretty simple to tie. Once you've tied a few of them, I mean, I would tie it in a fraction of time if I'm not having to explain what I'm doing or try to show in detail as I'm wrapping. Um, but the best part is they catch fish. Now you can also weight them. So I could put 
in addition to using a, um, a heavier eye, I could actually wrap a little bit of wire, copper wire, or something on the body before I build up the body, just to give it some more weight if you want. But I find this works best um, unweighted, unweighted, but on a sink tip line. Basically, I get the freest movement of the um, of the tail and of the legs in the water. And again, thank you for watching.